Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is my May update. Um, I'm actually currently sitting in one of the finished 14 bed HMOs released last week. As you can see, work hard, play hard, that's what it's all about. We'll start off with the 24 bed. So, with the 24 bed, we've had to change the contractors, like I said in the last videos. Um, since then, the new contractor has been working with all the professionals on site. We've managed to do our trial holes finally. Um, the fi basically, we managed to do all the inspection work, nothing to do with the neighbours. And then when we got to neighbours, there was a bit of drama where next door, they've been a long standing tenant, which I totally get. Um, but because it's council owned and they feel there's like a, a sentimental value of them being their home, um, they wouldn't appreciate the work that we're doing next door, which was all under, which was all legal. We were doing everything right, but th there was little instances where they were saying, "Oh, there's cracks in the walls that you've caused from like drilling a hole." Literally, imagine if you put like a screw behind a wall. It was literally something like that. But then, as always, we don't want to get into conflict with people. We just want to deal with it there and then. So the site manager was really proactive. He met the party wall surveyor on site. The tenant had a nephew, which um, he's been in the building trade himself, so like he knows everything by the ball. And he, he actually admired the professionalism. I think the frustration was, was that the council wasn't really communicating with the tenant. So then they feel as though they were left out of the loop. They thought we were doing stuff illegal by taking down bits and bobs, which is all, always going to be on our site anyways. But we said, look, let's have a meet up. Um, luckily, I don't have to get involved in the whole, pro whole process now. Um, I've just left it to the site manager, left it to the contractor, and they're dealing with it as professionally as possible. Um, that leads me on to the six bed HMO, which the builder was working on the 24, and then because I changed contractors, they decided to walk off the site. So like I said, at Quickly, I uh, reached out to another builder that I've used before. Um, they went round and they inspected the site. We took it, they took it up to plastering, and when they went round, they saw like the door frames weren't put in properly, the drainage didn't look right, uh, the electrician went round and they said the wiring was basically crap. Um, and uh, they just had to honestly tell me, like, we thought we were about four weeks away from finishing, but because the first fixes weren't done properly and to standard, uh, we've got to take like 10 steps back in order to get it right and then put it through to the final plastering and the second fix stage. So you can imagine we've already boarded up most of the wiring and plumbing. So to kind of adjust things, it's not as simple as just moving the wires. You've got to like either carve some holes in the plasterboard, which means you've got to do some remedial works on there as well. So luckily, it's the first time I've ever had to extend the bridge, but um, the, the lender's really understanding. I told them exactly how it was. So communication is really key, really, to tell them exactly how it is. There's no need to lie about it. So look, this is what's happened. This is how we're sorting it out and um, they extended the bridge for like three months, there was no fee involved, um, but on a monthly basis, we just need to keep them in the loop and tell them, this is what's happened since we last extended. Um, we've got some pictures here to show the progress. We are moving in the right direction. I mean, for a lender, they just want to know, um, will you finish a project? Because if you finish a project, we will refinance onto another product, which will pay them back. Um, luckily, the lender we're using is the lender that we use on the back end finance. So they have at least 10 mortgages with me and then like they, they understand what I do, they see the quality I put it at and they see the surveyors reports that back up the valuations and um, the type of product we're putting out there. So uh, for them, they, they don't have any co lack of confidence in me, it's really just following the process and making sure everyone is in the know. Before we get on to the next HMOs that I've put in through planning, I just want to go through the hotel. So about two weeks ago, we had a meeting with the planners. Uh, so there's highways there. We had like the uh, housing officers and um, everyone else that is involved in making decisions in the planning process. On a call, we did a Microsoft Teams call, which I thought was really, really helpful because what we did was we sent across plans of basic a massive 74 apartment development which used the whole width of the site pretty much the whole front and back of the site as well with some parking um, the first point was parking's not an issue um, it's so close to the center if anything we, we had about 20 spaces in the front and a bit in the middle um, and they were concerned with the amount of parking we needed because 
there's a bit of like a dodgy U-turn when you go to development. So they were considering if you live in the flat, would you make the effort of going a bit further down the road, make a right turn and turn around, or would you just do that U-turn where there's fast cars coming approaching? So um, they, they told us to consider that as well. And uh, I know from another friend who did an application, they actually had to factor in change of traffic costs. So they had to erect new traffic lights down the road and the, the costs and just like getting the application through, getting approvals and also the the actual cost of putting the lights in place and road closures so um, luckily we don't have to do that and uh, if anything we need to create more accessible parking so um, my, my take on that was more like wheelchair parking um, and, and that means we would have to, have to use more than one space to cater for one um, it, as long as we put in like cycle storage we're encouraging like eco travel the bus stops only literally on, on the same road uh, in front of the building so and you, if you walk to town there's only about five ten minutes so again um, with the city's plan they do want to encourage more cycling they're actually putting more cycle lanes in place and uh, the bus lanes are all centered off for, for, for the bus and taxis again with like the design they they didn't like how boxy it was uh, which which was a given really because I thought you've got so many neighbors nearby you just be overlooking the gardens but the whole purpose was we wanted to get as many in as possible, see what the reaction was. And uh, it wasn't the fact that we've had too many apartments, it's just in consideration of how high we went. We went about four and a half storeys, where existing plans from 2014, they did like a wrap around the hotel. And when you got, so ground floor took the whole site and you had like a bit of like a U shape, so you had parking in the centre. Um, and as you go up a floor, it kind of stops about here because like you've got houses in front of here so if you don't build there there's some natural light going in there um, and then when you go to the third floor it's pretty much the same again so they stop around the halfway mile so it's kind of like steps going and you see it all the time in like city centers where apartments they're not just one straight at the top at the top they tend to have a bit of balcony area and stuff like that again with the difference in the plans um, with 2014 is um, they didn't utilize the middle of the site so now that we know we don't need the parking, we can actually utilize what's in the middle, which is probably about 0.1 of an acre. And then like we, we can actually put more apartments in place. Uh, we went for like a grand kind of a hallway when you walk in with like ceiling lights coming down to give natural light. And uh, we just discussed and said, oh, that's not really needed. I went around another development in Birmingham. And uh, when you go through the hallways, it tends to be uh, three or four entrances depending on how many apartments there are so when you walk in you've got your post boxes on the side you've got the lift access and the stairs and on the other side it's pretty much the same mirror image so um, I, I just visualize it like oh, you wouldn't want to walk in you see like 70 odd post boxes like those New York style apartments uh, but yeah we'll be sharing you the plans in a few weeks time of what we've done to adjust it and the We'll let you know on what the council say about it. Jumping on to the, the new application. So with new applications, uh, we've put in for a seven bed. Um, it's existing right now as a six bed shared bathroom. Um, what we've done is done all en suite and there's like an outbuilding similar to what we've done at Ashbourne Road with the bungalow. Uh, I'm just gonna create a self-contained dwelling at the back. There is the benefit of this property is there is a drive through into the back of the garden. So it's strictly for access for that bungalow. And whilst we have tenants in the existing house, um, we can actually corner it off and do the works at the back. Um, so what's good is when those plans go through, it will be doing it in stages, because we don't want an empty property whilst the whilst plan is going through. So this year we've got tenants moving in and then next year we can do the work. So with the 10 bed HMO, um, it's actually eight studios and two ensuite rooms. Uh, right now as it is, it's an eight bedroom with four shared bathrooms and a kitchen and it's been lived in by students, so it's a bit dated and it needs a bit of uplift of life. Um, but what's funky about this development is we're actually doing an extension of the back and it's got a mezzanine floor, just purely because the garden steps down a bit. So with the mezzanine floor, we've turned that into its own kitchen, dining, living room space and then downstairs is the bedroom. So that's all self-contained and then in the main house, you've still got a massive kitchen uh, all the rooms have their, pretty much all the rooms have their own studios so then um, no one really needs to cook solely in the kitchen and they've got their own space but at the same time if they've got friends around they can still go in the kitchen. I think we should be able to fit a pool table in there because uh, right now there is one there and that's in their own living room. Um, so really excited to see what the planners think of this property which is in a prime location again 
close to students and close to the hospital. So even if we do miss a student season, um, we can still put our doctors and nurses in. Recently, I shared on my Facebook, um, I have two valuations back. So one of them is a six bedroom HMO. Um, I've had it for like nearly two years now, probably over now. Um, the valuation came in at 300,000. So initially I bought this house for 112,950. Spent about 75 grand on a refurb. And at the time I went for like the mainstream lenders like Kent Reliance and um, I had a value of about 220,000. So what I decided to do was, because I wanted to release equity to pay for some of the refurbs, um, I decided to remortgage it and on a commercial basis with Shawbrook who I've been banking with the last year and uh, they gave us a 300,000 uh, valuation so really excited to pull equity out of there. I think it's about 60 grand that I'm pulling out there and on top of that the pub came through at 470,000 pounds so this pub uh, as I showed in the previous videos I turned to seven studios um, spent about 235,000 and uh, bought it for 190 so overall the 470 is a, is a great benchmark and it's all filled now as well so all seven studios have gone um, it cash flow is about two and a half grand a month so I'm really really excited for it to pretty much once you see the refinance it's pretty much the end of the this, this stage and then you can move on to the next project whilst um, a management agent well in-house in management agent looks after the property um, and there tends to be a few snaggy bits that builders have missed out but tenants are quickly identifying it we've got like a whole list of every flat and then it just creates it a better opportunity for all the trades rather than going in at one flat at a time just go in within that week and get it all sorted all at once so last but not least um, we're going to complete on five houses in a row in Derby. Um, it's on the main strip of Derby. Um, literally, you can't miss it when you're going through to city centre. Really excited because it's been tenanted already for the following semester. There's one house which is empty for us to so do a bit of works in. And because it's so close to hospital, um, I've actually got plans to put some nurses in uh, towards like the August, September time. And um, yeah, it's one of the bigger developments I've never taken on. It's the first portfolio purchase. Um, so I'll be sharing you the figures on that in a later video. Uh, but that's it for me today. Uh, that's May's update. Let me know in the comments below if you need any questions and answers uh, that I can help you with. And um, stay tuned with our weekly progress in the next videos to come. Oh,